Good morning, everyone. Good morning and welcome to today's webinar. I hope everyone is doing great so far. As uh, Y Management Group said, good morning, Theo. Good morning, SY. Larry said, good morning, Theo. Good morning, Larry. Rodolf said, good morning. How are you doing, Rodolf? Mladen. Good morning from London. So, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you enjoy your weekend and you are ready for this new week uh, in trading. And as usual, to read aloud the disclaimer states that this content is for general information only and is not intended to provide trading or investment advice or personal recommendations. Today's Monday, and guess what? We will have the weekly fundamental analysis on the podcast section on our website. For new traders here, allow me to share the website's link exactly where you can listen to the podcast. And all the time, guys, at the same place, you can find the podcast. And here it is. And um, if you haven't downloaded the mobile app yet, please make sure you do that. So, so let's see who else joined us today. Uh, Oh, uh, sorry, Theo, I subscribed today with a company instead of my name, William. All right, William, uh, welcome to our webinars. Ebrahim said, good morning, Theo. Good morning, everyone. Hope you had a good weekend, Theo, and all the best to you and to everyone for the upcoming days. Likewise, Ebrahim. Uh, next, lots of love and good vibes from South Africa, Ibrahim. Okay, Nicola said, good morning, everyone. Had a good day from Nambia. Welcome, Nicholas. Maria Julia said, good morning. Let's get this party started. <laughs> All right, Mogiol, how are you doing, my friend? Of course, from Maldives. I'm sure it's a desired destination for many of us, right? Mr. Carlos said, good morning, guys. Good morning, Carlos. How are you doing, Nick? Said hi to everyone. Rumen said, good morning. How are you doing, Rumen? Poncho said, hello. Hello, my friends. Uh, Nicholas, good morning, Theo. Good morning, Mr. Carlos. Said Theo in pound US dollar daily chart. Could it be considered as a head and shoulder patterns? Mawela said, Good morning, good morning, Mawela. Danny said, Good morning, everyone, and thank you, Theo. You are very welcome, Danny, and good morning. Nicholas said, Could you please quickly explain this strategy on the DAX 40 trades and how do you decide where to put a buy stop and a sell stop? Absolutely, I will do that. So, Ruben said, good morning, Theo. Good morning, Ruben. Uh, Roland said, good morning, all. And Xman said, good morning and hello. Hello, both Roland and Xman. And Cherry, of course. Where did you disappear, Mr. Cherry? It's been a while. <laughs> I hope you are very well, Cherry. Uh, Henry said, good morning, everyone. Good morning, Henry. So, ladies and gentlemen, let's start with the pound against the US dollar. And Mr. Carlos asked if there is a head and shoulder pattern visible here. Let's bring the drawing tool as well. So, Price, okay, from 
one point it looks like a head and shoulders. Now, here it's a higher high, let's say the left shoulder, let's say the head. And then the market start doing this. Market was consistent at this point with one swing, could be identified as the left shoulder, but in this case here, multiple swings appear. Looks like if we pay attention to that, we have one left shoulder, there is one left shoulder here, and here there is one, two, three right shoulders. Market had to be a bit consistent. But saying that, markets, they don't always move in a, either a straight line upwards or downwards, or they don't show the pattern in a textbook format as we read them on the books. But there are some difficulties at some point to identify the patterns. Um, there is a high chance to um, say that, yeah, it can be a head and shoulder. We identified this up, slope upwards uh, trend line. There is also a strong support here. At this point, price broke and closed below the support. Therefore, we can consider this as uh, the beginning of a new downward move. And um, yeah, why not? I could see that as an opportunity to initiate some short positions. If we zoom out to find a bit more detail, to look for a more detail on the charts and on the four hour chart, there is this candle here and four uh, periods afterwards price traded within this boundary so looks like buyers are not that strong to lift prices upward therefore we to expect to see some decline now if i would like to trade the five minute chart or the 15 minute chart my strategy applies always for the entries, the Bollinger Bands on the lower time frames. Uh, I told you many times about this. I don't know if you remember, if you understood what we uh, say. Um, it's fact that in trading, we have to say the same thing. We have to repeat it many times to really understand it. Not because it's something difficult, but or it's something complicated but uh, that's that's how it is. So uh, I can't change anything in that. Okay, so uh, if I want to trade the 15 minute chart and I identify that the direction I would like to trade based on the four hour daily chart, it's uh, to sell. I will have either place, there are two ways to trade lower time frames. Uh, once we first we have to identify the main direction, right? After we identified it, and in this case we said we want to sell, depends on the strategy you use to enter the market. For me, using the Bollinger Bands, there are two ways to enter. Either with a break here, it's a range. The bands they show uh, they are flat, so they show that market is not moving. So it's a range. Either I can play a sell stop below the low of the range and wait for the price and a, and a stop loss above the high of the range and expect the price to at least target this last point uh, of reference on the left. That's how I do the intraday. Or if the market is in a uh, downtrend, I will look to see correction and then to enter the trade. These are the two ways. On the higher time frame, someone asked what about on the higher time frames. On the higher time frames, mainly I look as well, I pay a lot of attention to the price action itself on the higher time frames because 
Price action is price action. I do understand. I support price action. I'm a price action trader, but there is one thing in the uh, in forex and in cryptocurrencies, especially when I and when I teach you guys here about the forex and uh, and you can apply everything here and also in cryptocurrency trading, uh, the technical analysis side is this. These two markets are extremely volatile. Therefore we will uh, we see a lot of false breakouts and a lot of randomness in the price uh, in the lower time frames. So I prefer to validate more price action on the higher time frames. Uh, is that clear, guys? A lot of questions. Let's read. Florin said, good morning. Good morning, Florin. Dow Jones read rejected trend line and resume to upside all right is considered time to buy or have to wait and see what's going to happen uh need to check the down down jones willie said what settings do you have the bollinger band on please willie the default ones um, I, it's the two deviation and the 20 period moving average. Florin said for our chart, daily time frame correlation. Uh, Cherry said I'm fine. Uh, okay, my mistake. I take it back. <laughs> okay, Cherry. Uh, I will know from now on, and thanks for mentioning that. <laughs> Mogiol, will we do? Will we do any non-financial buy and sell stops on DAX today, even though it's bank's holiday in London? Yes, of course we will uh, place our order. Swing trading said any news about the trading view integration and um, we are still waiting but you can trade uh you can trade the setup from our admirals platform on the website because we already have that uh interpretation um in our website but not actually on the platform so i cannot open and close trees on the platform raquel how are you doing raquel uh said good morning bank holiday here in london today yes do you know how this will affect the market look because regardless it's a bank holiday in london and in wales but um i think in scotland it's not uh again the currency pairs they will they will move right there is also financial institutions in Germany that they are um, active and they create volatility. They are also in France, in Italy. So for the euro, it's a bit um, uh, it's a bit wider than the financial institution. If it, when it's bank holiday in in the US, that's where the um, the issue comes with uh, liquidity, okay? Uh, not necessarily in London. Ibrahim asked for the gold market. And uh, so Euro US dollar, next currency pair on the list. There is a support broken last week, price closes below that support for two days in a row. So we consider this as a valid break. Ideally, we will be looking to sell this market from this point here and to capture this type of moves only on the lower time frames. On the four hour chart, for example, let's see if some trend lines can be drawn. I start from here and I touch this one, but here prices, they cut it. So I don't consider this as a valid channel or a trend line, okay? Trend line and channel line. Um, this one, no, as well. I start from there to there. 
Let's try this one. So this one looks like a, a decent fit. There are two options. The market can uh, come all the way here. Maybe it surpassed a little bit the, the resistance. And if a reversal price action appears at this resistance area between the resistance and uh, the downward trend line, it will could be a good opportunity to sell. Australian dollar, early this morning, retail sales in uh, Australia, they were expecting them to rise to 0.3%. It rose to 0.5%. And yes, yeah, still looking for shorts here. Uh, I don't see anything else so far. New Zealand US dollar at the support price might correct itself a little bit, but uh, it's still bearish. Overall, it's bearish. I mean, to, <clears throat> to tell you that we are on the daily charts. All right, guys. And let's say there is uh, this range, for example, if today's candlestick will close as bullish, price will confirm this range boundary. So if I tell you, okay, there are two there are two ways. Uh, price, it's going to break outside, and then we're going to start looking for longs, or price, it's going to break to the downside, and we're going to start looking for short. That's, yeah, that's, with this way, you are always right, and you are always uh, correct of whatever you say, right? But uh, the challenge is to understand the market dynamics. And if the price is going to break above here, we have to understand that there is a strong resistance right here. This is the origin of the move. And it's not always the case to, um, to buy after this swing breaks to the upside. Why? Because the majority of the activity is sales here. And if we use a FIP tool, the retracement of the Fibonacci, we can clearly see that there are obstacles around this area here. Where is the 61.8%? Just a little bit above. You see this low here. So there are cases we have to uh, understand that we are retail traders, we use stop losses in the markets, and we don't keep trades, we don't keep trades without productive stops. And sometimes we cannot afford to sit within fluctuations in the market. All right, I hope that makes sense. That's why we try to identify the highest probabilities and we use some technical indicators and tools in order to trade in the direction that can has a high probability trading setup. Sometimes it's not only the trend, it's also to go against the trend because any trend on any time frame, it's, a, it's another trend of another time frame, okay? And This pair, it's the US dollar against the Japanese yen. One, two, kind of three tops here. But uh, the indicator shows a lack of momentum. Is this the case to sell it without a strong price action? I wouldn't touch it. So, and uh, so far, a strong price action reversal strong price action at this minor resistance is not there so i'm not willing to sell and here is the psychological uh, issue with traders if you um you are looking the chart right now what everyone sees is a bearish candle and what the mind start thinks is ah 
today is a bearish day. They go on the five minute chart, one minute chart, 15 minute chart, even on the daily chart, and they do sell, stop loss, take profit or take profit. <laughs> I'm joking. So they start selling from here, but this candle hasn't completed yet. If you look this candle here, the reason you see it black is because it's been completed. So uh, don't get caught into this uh, imagination trick, let's say, because you see the current color of the candle is bearish and to believe that the day will close as bearish today. There is nothing technical support this factor for uh, for high probability trades. Therefore, we better be more um, careful. Price didn't move as we expected on the Canadian dollar, US dollar, Canadian dollar. As we mark the higher resistant here. Uh, but look, price, it shows extreme weakness in the trial to move higher. Remember this week is the non-fund payrolls and the anticipation for them. You will listen the, on the podcast later and you will understand. I will explain that. USD CH, so for, for now on the USD Canadian dollar, I'm a bit skeptical to keep buying. It's not too much, uh, too much ongoing without any correction. I mean, there are some other pairs to to look for. USDCHF too close as above this resist this support, and maybe we can see more uh, lifted to the price. Euro JPY. Double inside. Uh, let's see if the market it's gonna move downwards. Also, the pound, the same. If someone wants to play the bearish engulfing, every time the price, you know that let's say we have a lower low, and every time the price makes a new high, you can place a bearish and a sell stop here, stop loss above there. Try to get for two to one, three to one. Remember to check the ATR. Uh, if you are risking more than the average true range, it doesn't look as a high probability trade. If you are new here, or even if you are not new and you still have questions about ATR and potential bearish and goffing and bullish and goffing, I can explain them in another session because time is pressing us right now. Let's check the gold. This uh, downward trend line can be deleted. Bullish engulfing looks like that everyone who bought from here about 100 pips, not even 100 pips, sorry, about 95 pips, uh, the market gave much, much more. So uh, I don't know if you're still in the trade. For me, if you believe that this is you want to play it as a swing trader and you believe that this is the new uptrend development, it's very it's at a very early stage, and you believe that the market is going to do like this or you believe that the market is going to keep on going without any correction, you can either move your stop loss below this low here or you can close your trades or you can uh, do whatever you want, right? It's just some... Um, some ways to play this trade out. And let's check the Dow Jones very quickly. And we're going to have a look at the DAX. Dow Jones, look, it's in a downtrend, obviously, lower highs and lower lows. I don't see this anymore. This move is done. So market makes lower highs and lower lows. And we can find some trend line downward trend lines or some moving averages something to to expect it the price to tap into that area and start selling off on the lower time frames though excuse me four hour chart one hour chart price action reversals can be used but it doesn't mean we're going to enter on the one hour chart 
here and we hope that the market is going to go straight line with a 20 point stop loss and 200 points take profit i mean these things happen but it's rare it's not the case all the time so dax couple of minutes before the london open on the daily chart though price makes this high there is uh it breaks the high of the previous day so five minute chart i will go for a buy stop order above the highs here now uh let's place the order and i will go for a sell stop order below here i think this has to be moved yeah it's this one here sell stop order below the low of uh this uh, hammer candle and a buy stop order above this one so uh someone asked me how do i choose how do i choose this strategy and what am i looking for first i look the daily chart guys exactly what i explain it's that's what i look for so i look at the daily chart and see where the market uh, is moving if there is a clear uptrend a clear downtrend in this case market just bounced from a support but it's not in an uptrend it's not in a downtrend and then i go on the five minute chart and i try to find the most recent swings and i place a buy stop order above the most recent swing high and a sell stop order below the most recent swing low why i do that because at exactly 10 a.m right we see on the on the chart on the screen the london open it's gonna create some volatility extreme volatility on the DAX and statistically on average again statistically not every time this happens uh, the market moves anywhere between 10 to 20 points minimum before it either changes direction or continues to the same direction Florin asks, is good to keep an open position in buy on the USD JPY? Where is the USD JPY? <laughs> to keep an open position. you have okay if you guys bought the bullish engulfing as i told you many times you should understood that here is a minor resistance and we don't know what the price will do when it reaches this level if it's going to break or if it's going to move below in this case we could see that price on friday stopped right at this resistance so buyers weren't strong to push beyond the resistance so maybe we're going to see some correction now nobody knows what's going to happen and how resistance if today it's going to break uh, or it's going to move lower we don't know the only thing for sure and that's a good example for everyone guys the only thing for sure is that this bullish engulfing uh, indicated that there is a high probability the market to move upwards until this resistance here so these are the best cases to do intraday trading you find um a structure that you do understand and you have strong bias in the market and you go to any lower time frame and try to find a way to trade with this higher time frame direction okay dax we haven't been filled yet in the trade let's see if the market is going to continue moving upward darshan hello darshan the fact Adarshan asked that the fact um, of the uh, bank holiday in London is not relevant, I suppose, not in Euro Open. We ex we said that we do expect to see some uh, move 
not just because the London um, uh, the London banks are closed and the whales, uh, but because there are also other financial centers that they uh, they force and they put on the market, especially for Monday morning. I believe that anyhow the market will get it, if not a, a strong direction, it will either break outside of this five minute uh, congestion. So because people are bidding on the market, people are um, are trading, so we do expect price to move. And especially because we trade between this five minute congestion, we can see some uh, breakout. Now, keep in mind, until for, for um, in the next three candles, uh, so that was the first, second, and third candle. So by 10, 15 uh, local time or um, broker time, admiral's time, or by 8, uh, 15 UK time, if none of the orders get filled, I will delete both of them. Let's check the silver. Uh, Henry asked on the weekly chart, price bounce from this from this support. Now there are one, two, three weekly resistant areas. Because they are very close to each other, I'll take the, the highest and I will mark it as the relevant resistance for any daily uh, trading, any daily execution trading. So market moved significantly upward. And if this, if the price stays within this uh, range, we can see another shoot until this resistance. But that, that's not a case for me to initiate any trade market, it's all price, it's all already extended. And if I want to get into the market right here with a buy stop there and a stop loss very tight, I have to acknowledge and credit this resistance that maybe can cause the market to retrace 61.8% before it continue to the upside. X said our buy stop got triggered on the DAX. So I cancel the sell stop order. And as always, uh, I hope that that's not going to end up as a uh, false breakout. I'll have a stop loss below this low here. If the price comes at this swing here, I will scratch the trade. Hiago said, good morning, good morning, Hiago. Diego said, hello, Theo, greetings from Chile. I will go to Cyprus one day. You are very welcome. Let me know if you are in the around in the island. No problems. I remember it was, I think it was Friday or Thursday. Which day? That one minute after we end the webinar, the uh, the trade played out, and I sent a message on the Telegram group. Uh, if you guys uh, received any notification, I just posted underneath the uh, the day's webinar. Let's see if we're gonna see some more push to the upside for a uh, few points. Because we have an uptrend, 
we can end price made a new high if we use the FIP extension, how do we use the FIP extension? We draw it the opposite way with the FIP tool and we measure the move of the, uh, of the correction. So from here to there, and the 161.8 and 2%, usually it's the maximum um, extension of the price before correct itself. So when we have trends, it's a very useful tool to, to look at, guys. I think I have to end the webinar now because another webinar will take place. Chigon Zimaikol asks, good morning. Uh, please, why the daily chart and not any other time frame? I use the daily chart because we understand what happened overally uh, during um, all the three major trading sessions of the day. So we have a combined understanding and uh, a vast understanding of really what were the forces from the Tokyo session, London session, and to the New York session. And if everything shows a directional move, then high chances that the next day it can continue in that direction if there is no support of resistance. Therefore, it gives us two roads, two paths. The first path, if you want to trade the daily chart or the four-hour chart, it's um, understandable. And you have uh, what we call the higher time frame reference. But if you want to trade the lower time frames, like five-minute charts or 15-minute charts, also you prefer to trade with the flow of the of the money okay that's why we mainly use the daily chart and not any other time frame if you have another opinion i'm happy to hear it and um all right guys uh i will leave you with this uh for me remember uh trade will be irrelevant if price it's going to come at this point here and i will scratch it so I wish everyone to have a fantastic day ahead. Thank you so much for your participation. I hope you gain a lot of value. Uh, for those who participate from Zoom, please make sure you leave some feedback after we end the webinar. And until the end of the month, I would like to see collective of um, ideas or anything you want to say about these webinars. And I wish to everyone again to have a fantastic day ahead. And I will see you tomorrow at the same time. Thank you so much.